Hi, I'm Susan Kellner of the Ontario Pesticide Education Program, and I'm here to uh, review uh, the Chapter 16 from the Grower Pesticide Safety Course Manual, Pesticide Spills. There are about there are 10 slides in this presentation, and it will take us about five minutes to review. Okay, let's get started. What will I learn? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define a spill, describe when a spill must be reported, describe how to clean up a minor spill, a major spill, and a spill during transport, and list items to include in a spill cleanup kit. Be prepared if a spill happens, protect yourself and others, reduce human health and environmental hazards, minimize damage to crops and buildings. So, Although we don't want a spill to happen, it could happen, and if we're a little bit prepared, um, we'll be able to respond properly. The Pesticides Act and or the Environmental Protection Act both um, have direction on what our requirements are when there is a spill. So number one, we would report the spill. All spills of pollutants must be reported to the Ministry of Environment, Conservation, Parks, and the municipality. So the Spills Action Center at 1-800-268-6060 uh, is open uh, 24 hours, seven days a week. And so uh, that is your way into the Ministry of the Environment, Conservation, Parks uh, for uh, reporting a spill. Number two, um, begin to stop, contain, and clean up the spill. The person in control of the spilled pollutant must stop the spill, contain it, clean it up, and restore the natural environment. So begin whatever you can do, and you'll be getting direction from the Spills Action Center experts on the phone. Three, uh, compensate people for losses. The owner or person in control is responsible for compensating anyone affected for losses and damages as a result of the spill. So that uh, is something to keep in mind and be aware of as well. The Pesticides Act and Environmental Protection Act defines a spill. So what is a spill? A spill is defined as a discharge of a pollutant. It's going into the natural environment from or out of a structure, a vehicle, or another container, and it is abnormal in quality or quantity. Okay, so it's um, in a place it's not supposed to be, in a in a large in an amount uh, larger than what it should be for proper use of that pollutant. So remember, um, best practice is um, to have some insurance that covers environmental um, incidents. Insurance agents recommend that farmers maintain at least uh, two million in pollution liability coverage and three million in aggregate pollution liability. So follow all regulations or your insurance may not cover you. If you are a victim of a spill, you are entitled to compensation under the Environmental Protection Act. Minor spills. Okay, this could be um, something in your pesticide storage. You're going to protect yourself first. Wear protective clothing and personal protective equipment. Stop people and animals from entering the area. Ventilate the area if the spill is inside. Stop and contain that spill. Label the secondary container. You may have to put that um, broken container um, in the contents into another container. So you would relabel according to the regulation with the trade name, the PCP Act registration number, and the concentration of each active ingredient. And clean up the spill following the label direction or safety data sheet. So major spills, again, protect yourself first, wear protective clothing and personal protective equipment, stop people and animals from entering the area. If people have contact with the pesticide, you've got to stop their exposure and begin first aid if necessary. Stop and contain that spill, cover the spill with an absorbent material, and you would have to then dispose of the hazardous material 
It must be disposed of in according to the requirements under the Environmental Protection Act. So again, the Spill Jackson Center can give you uh, advice on that. The contaminated material from a spill cleanup is a hazardous waste. So read the safety data sheet for decontamination information. Here's an example. So under section six of a safety data sheet, there's accidental release measures. So it'll tell you what you should be doing for cleanup of that, um, in this case, a pesticide. And uh, you may want to uh, get help from the company. That's all, all, also a very good source of help. Um, and again, um, dealing with that cleanup material is a bit, bit of a problem. If you can use the material, you can call the local environment ministry office for approval to use. And an example of that would be if a pesticide spilled into water and it's practical, practical to collect that water and then use the mixture according to the label. Um, again, the Spills Action Center gives you advice on what to do. And if you cannot use the mixture, so you're going to contact probably what would be a liquid waste remover in your area to come and pick it up. So check um, your search engine and find out who that would be in your area. And again, um, the municipality and the Spills Action Center may have a list of who that would be. And uh, you would get also an emergency waste generation registration number to get rid of that hazardous waste from the spill. Okay, Spills Action Plan Basically, wear protective clothing and equipment, keep others away, stop and contain the spill, report the spill to the municipality and the Spills Action Center, and do the cleanup. There are, we have a handy reminder stickers. Um, they're available from the Ontario Pesticide Education Program. Uh, we give them out at uh, courses and you can uh, use those. Pesticide Spills Action Plan.